All right, everybody, this is Zeph again, and I'm going to try and do a little bit more in-depth again on the tutorial I did yesterday on making this retexture of a mesh kit in Second Life. Um, I'm doing this again, only I'm going to get a little bit more detailed. Um, what I had, um, here's another tip for using GIMP. Um, when you've accidentally shut your tool window and your layer window, easy way to go about bringing them up is go to Windows, Recently Closed Docs, and you will bring up your toolbox, and you will bring up your layer box. These things are very important to have open while you're working. I know, I mean, I get overzealous sometimes when I'm trying to shut the program, and I end up closing these two windows myself a lot and then regret it. So we're going to go about this again. Um, I've already done this in a tutorial before. Um, I'm going to redo it again. This is the layer that you get with the finished product um, that comes in the kit. They will usually include a finished dress in them or finished product in them um, texture but you don't want to use theirs in order to uh, create your own stuff it's kind of frowned upon in fact i believe it's in their fine print you're not supposed to use theirs straight up without um changing it so here is the regular layer I'm adding a new one onto it. The layers showing up here. This is a very important step, which is taking your shadow map or displacement and converting it to just the shadows. This is just the shadow bit. I'm copying it and then I am pasting it onto this layer. Here's a step I didn't get quite um, explained yesterday was if you don't have the anchor thing showing go back to your rectangle select tool then you will get in here if you have any room around the side it'll show it'll change into an anchor my cursor turned into an anchor you want to anchor that layer down in GIMP you have to anchor things that you've pasted it's kind of a new one on me because I'm a paint shop pro person so now I have the shadow layer on top of the original layer I'm going to put another layer in here I'm going to move it down in between the two and that's where I'm going to slap my own fabric um, I have picked this crazy, <laughs> this crazy floral thing. Here's another recommendation. If you're getting into making mesh clothes like this, collect a lot of fabric textures. Seamless is better. There's lots of billions of stores in Second Life that sell the textures. Or you can go out on your own quest in the internet for full permission ones that you don't have any problems with copyrights on. Um, you can subscribe to one of those ridiculously expensive places like um, Shutterstock or something. Uh, but it's generally a better bargain to buy them in Second Life. Um, so I'm going to take a copy of this. Not knowing exactly how big that one was. I'm going to paste it on that layer. Now... I don't really know how big that is compared to the dress. That seems about like the right scale. You know, if you have a dress and you have flowers on it or something, you don't want your flowers to be so vastly large that they look silly on the dress. Sometimes you'll have to um, paste that texture in there like four times, um, something of that nature, so that it looks appropriately sized for a dress in um, Second Life. So if you're walking down the street, you don't have somebody with some gigantic flowers all over, you know, or something 
Um, it's almost like when you're dealing with a dollhouse or something in real life, um, and you have a couch and you have some large piece of fabric on it, it doesn't look as right. I mean, it doesn't look as good as if you had something with a tiny print on it when you're going down and you have to think of Second Life almost like a little dollhouse, um, sometimes in the scale of things. So that is on there. Yeah, I believe it's still floating. So I have to anchor this too. You don't want the sparkly things around the edge. You want to make sure everything's anchored down. Now, I can't see much in here now because this is a black fabric. I'm going to go and make it light again. Or, you know, yeah, light would be good. Somewhere around in there, so that I can see uh, the outline of the dress. Then, I'm going to... This is where it's going to get fun. This is where I'm going to change up what I did yesterday. Give me a moment here. I think maybe I should deal with a belt first. All right. I have selected a belt, a leather, or I don't know, almost looks alligator, out of my um, mass collection of um, textures, and I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to go into, need that one right now, then I'm going to paste it. Now this may be a mistake. Yeah, I can't see it. Make a new layer, I'm sorry. I need to make a new layer. Then I'm going to paste it. Hit my resizer scale tool and bring it up probably in something like that and say scale and it needs to be scaled a little more I'm just covering the bit that was the belt and uh, say uh, you couldn't get it in there just the right size uh, you have to experiment with what that is, but say you did that, and, um, this is hanging out into the dress, and, um, we're on its own layer, so we can, um, wait a minute, it's on its own layer, so you want to anchor it, then you want to grab yourself a, the lasso tool, and then you can come in here and cut it out around the neck of this thing. I'm cutting out the bits of uh, where I didn't want it to be. Say, if you had um, something that was hanging down in front of uh, another part of the dress, you want to um, cut out and make a, you know, make a way for it. Now, um, I need to uh, turn my fabric back up if I was done. Um, and I know that that looks uh, rather uh, plain. Uh, yesterday I had cut out these buttons down at the bottom. I didn't really need to. Um, I think it's part of the belt. It's not really a button. As it turned out, I didn't need buttons. Didn't have buttons. Um, here's another um, bit. I'm going to make another layer. And um, make my uh, dress texture light again so I can see this. And come in here and um, what I need to do before I do that. I really want that red texture um, captured because that's what I'm going to use as my um, lapel color, or my collar. 
So I'm going to um, pick up the eyedropper tool and come in here and snag that red. Notice it comes up over here. If it stays there, you're doing really good. Sometimes it'll flip back. So now then I need to lower the opacity of the dress again so I can see. I'm going on to that layer and then I'm going to take the lasso and start selecting just that bit of the collar. And if you don't get it exact, it's going to show very funny on your finished product. So, this is where a steady hand comes into play. And um, I'm not always the greatest at it. it takes a lot of um, patience in coming back uh, repeatedly to um, something of that nature, a shape like that. And then hit your uh, bucket and fill it. Um, you will need that also over here in the back of the shirt. I mean, on the back of the dress. And um, things that get really close to the other bit. It's going to affect your shadows. You want to stay clear of it. And your belt, you don't want it showing up in that either. Steady hand. Bucket tool. Um, I may not have gotten that perfect. Um, so then... I'm on my own layer here anyway. Sometimes I will go in and um, use a smudge tool and fix up uh, bits that I see are hanging out wrong. It's a little bit easier to do a touch-up that way. Um, I don't really want to go too crazy against that line. I just see that... I see that line and it bothers me. Okay. So... Now then, I'm going to bring up my dress color again to see what I got. Now that, um, it doesn't look like much right here, but it's going to look pretty good in Second Life, I think. Um, we will see. I first of all need to take and export this, um, We'll call this tutorial two. And everything's, uh, all the levels are up where they're supposed to be. See, actually, in the end, you don't even probably, sometimes you won't be needing this bottom original layer. Um, I just use it as a guide or if it has buttons or something that I absolutely don't want to have to redo. Um, I use very little of the original, if at all possible, none of it. So you can sometimes turn that view of that layer off, so in the saved product it won't be there. Okay, this is what it looked like in World. I hope the video helps somebody.